As a first step in our structural design, we should confirm the locations of the grids and the columns placed in the architectural model, and make any adjustments that might be needed. We'll start by taking a look at the linked architectural model. We can use the section box to cut away the south end of the building so we can see the columns and the position of the corridors on the upper floors. Based on this, we might decide that the north-south grids for the interior column lines should be moved to line up with the corridor walls above. Let's open the Level 1 plan view, and we can select a grid and enter a new dimension to move the grid to align with the corridor. Revit warns us that we're moving a shared element, and that's okay. We'll move the second grid to match the width of the corridor, and again we'll see the warning and use the Escape key to close the warning. Next, we'll start by adjusting the columns that have been copied in from the linked model. These were copied in as wide flange columns, and we'll change their type to concrete columns. Select all instances in the view, and then we'll edit the type and load in a concrete column family of the type we want. There in the structural section of the library, in the columns folder, and finally in the concrete folder we'll choose Concrete Square. Let's change the size to 18 by 18 inches by choosing another type, and now our concrete columns are in place. Next, we'll place some concrete beams between these columns to support the floor above. Let's move down the top surface of the section box to clip away the upper floors. Then we can also hide the floor element in this view so we can clearly see the tops of the columns upon which we're going to place the beams. Next, we'll use the Beam tool and load a concrete column from the Structural Framing folder in the Concrete section of the library. Let's duplicate one of the existing sizes to make a 12 inch by 12 inch beam. And of course here changing the depth to 1 foot or 12 inches. Then we'll turn on a 3D snapping tool and set the placement plane to level 1. Now we'll zoom in and hover over the top of a column until a square box is shown to indicate the column endpoint is selected, and we'll click as the start point of our beam. You can also see this in the status bar here at the lower right. Click to place the start of the beam then click again on the end point. We will repeat this to place beams wherever they're needed. Next, we'll change the floors that were copied in from the linked model to our structural floors. We'll start in the 3D structural frame view with the section box moved up and the first floor revealed. Let's move up the top of the section box to show all of the levels. Then we'll use the Reveal Hidden Elements control to unhide the floor that was hidden at level 2. Select the generic 12 inch floor at level 2 and let's edit its type. We'll duplicate this type and call the new type Concrete Slab 8 Inches. Then we'll edit the structure for this type, choosing Cast in Place Concrete for the material and setting the thickness to 8 inches. Click OK to create this new type. Revit will warn us that we're changing the thickness of a shared element, and that's OK. Click OK to close the warning.